I'm Henry Gilliland, the Mechatronic Specialist with Electric Supply and Equipment. In this video, I'm going to explain the purpose of the MAH instruction and show you how to properly implement it using ladder logic in Rockwell's Studio 5000 Logics Designer. But before we get going, please be sure to subscribe to ESNE TV to view more videos like this one. The MAH, or Motion Axis Home, instruction is the integrated motion instruction that is used to activate the homing routine. The homing routine is pre-configured in the homing tab of the axis property and has several different configurations. Let's take a look at the different components of the instruction. First you have the axis field. This is where you will assign the axis that the instruction will target. Next we have the motion control field. This is where a tag of type motion instruction will go. This is the tag that will be used by the processor to perform the functionality of the whole instruction. Then there are five status indicator bits. None of these bits tell you anything about the current state of the target axis. They are only diagnostics associated with the given instruction. The EN or enable bit will be true when the rung that the instruction is on goes true. The DN or done bit will be true when the motion instruction executes successfully with no errors. The state of the done bit only updates when the enable bit transitions from false to true. The ER or error bit will be true when the motion instruction executes with errors. The state of the ER bit will also only update when the enable bit transitions from false to true. The IP or in process bit will be true while the instruction is currently running a task and has not yet finished. The PC or process complete bit will be true when the instruction finishes running its task. Now let's build the instruction in ladder logic. You can find the MAH instruction under the motion move tab of the ladder logic instruction selector. Assign the target axis, create an instruction tag. It's a good idea to name the instruction tag after the instruction itself. That way, when troubleshooting in the future, it will be easier to find the tag. Now right-click on the label and select New in order to create the tag in the tag database. As mentioned earlier, the tag will be of type Motion Instruction. Select Create, and now compile the code. In order to execute the instruction, the rung the instruction is on will need to transition from false to true. To do this here, we'll toggle the bit on the rung. As you can see, when the rung is true, the enable bit is true. The instruction executed successfully, so you can see that the done bit is also true. As mentioned earlier, there are many different possible actions that the home instruction can take. We will discuss that shortly. When the rung transitions from true to false, you will see the enable bit transitions to false. This does not mean that the MAH instruction is no longer running you will need to look at the IP and PC bits in order to determine if the home instruction has completed its task. If the instruction is executed and the ER bit goes true, then you can look at the .ERR and .EXERR tags to see what specific error you're getting. You can then search for the error in the help file to determine what caused the instruction to error. As mentioned earlier, there are several different ways the homing function can be configured. Let's run through the different configuration options and talk about what they're used for. First, there is the mode selection. The options are active and passive. Active means that when the MAH instruction is executed, it will first enable the position control loop of the target axis. Passive means that the target axis will not be enabled. Next, there is the position field. This field defines the position that the actual position of the target axis will be set to when the MAH is executed. Normally, this is left at zero. However, there are some circumstances that will require the use of a non-zero value for this field. Next, there is the offset field. This specifies the amount that the axis is offset from the home position. Then there is the sequence selection. There are four options, immediate, switch, marker, and switch dash marker. If immediate is selected, then the actual position of the axis will be set to the value set in the position field immediately upon executing the MAH. 
If switch is selected, then the axis will need to move to the home switch before redefining the actual position. If the mode is set to active, then this will happen automatically when the MAH is executed. The home switch will need to be wired to one of the digital inputs on the front of the drive. This digital input will also need to be configured as the home switch in the module properties of the servo drive. If marker is selected, then the axis will need to move to the marker pulse that is built into the encoder on the back of the servo motor. The marker pulse occurs once every revolution of the encoder. Again, when the mode is active, the servo will automatically move until the marker pulse is detected. Once the marker pulse is detected, the actual position will be redefined at that point. If switch-marker is selected, then the axis will need to move to the home switch and then continue moving until the marker pulse is detected. Using the marker pulse for homing is very accurate and should be used in applications that require finely tuned positioning. Finally, the limit switch selection defines if the home switch is normally open or normally closed. For active homing, there are some additional configurations that define how the servo will move towards the home switch or marker pulse. If forward is selected, then the servo will move in the forward direction during the automatic homing sequence in order to find the home switch. Reverse moves the servo in the reverse direction. Unidirectional means that the servo will move to the home switch or marker pulse and then redefine the actual position when it is detected. Bidirectional means that the servo will move until the home switch or marker pulse is detected, and then it will reverse direction of motion until the home switch or marker pulse is no longer detected. This type of homing helps reduce the amount of error associated with using electromechanical and electromagnetic sensors. The speed field simply defines the speed at which the servo will move at each stage of the homing routine. If unidirectional is selected, then the return speed will be ignored. Now you know the basics of how to properly use and configure the motion axis home instruction. If you liked this video, please click the like button and notification bell so you'll be notified when we post new videos. Thanks for watching.